Previously on Smart Mobility Today, we looked at EVs, EV charging, robots, mobility in Detroit, and AI reading your mind. This week's stories focus on many different energy sources, ranging from wind to hydrogen, updates on EV adoption globally, and some interesting ways robots are being used to explore distant moons or our brains. You've got something to say, and we can help you say it. Detroit Media Productions is here for your audio, photography, and video needs. DetroitMediaProductions.com Hi, this is Cindy Polakowski. In the UK, for the first time ever, wind turbines generated more electricity than the amount that comes from gas. In the first quarter of 2023, a third of the country's electricity came from wind farms, according to Imperial College London. Plus, in April, the UK saw a new record in energy coming from solar. The country wants all of its electricity to have net zero emissions within the next 12 years. Ian Staffel, an energy researcher at Imperial College, summed the news up this way, quote, There are still many hurdles to reaching a completely fossil fuel-free grid, but wind out supplying gas for the first time is a genuine milestone event. Most of the wind power generated in the UK comes from offshore wind farms. In fact, the installation of new onshore wind turbines has been banned since 2015, with certain exceptions. Companies can only build onshore wind turbines on land specifically identified for development in land use plans developed by local councils. In December, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said he would relax these restrictions in order to speed up wind power development. Closer to home, floating technology may solve some energy generation problems. In the town of Cohos, New York, the city planner was faced with having to find an affordable way to generate electricity. With no land available for something like a large solar farm, the focus moved to the city's 14-acre water reserve. That reservoir can hold enough solar panels to power all the municipal buildings and streetlights, and it would save half a million dollars every year. This affordable and clean power alternative is catching on in the U.S. after a period of great popularity in Asia. Floating solar panel systems are attractive for many reasons. They are clean, they do not require large parcels of land, and they conserve water by preventing evaporation. A study published in the journal Nature Sustainability reported that more than 6,000 cities in 124 countries could use floating solar to satisfy 100% of their energy needs plus save enough water to fill 40 million Olympic-sized swimming pools every year. For most of us, the shift to EVs is not that far off, but many of us still have some questions. What will it take to power these vehicles? How long will it take? What will it cost? How far can I drive? Will the grid really hold up? And what is the impact on the environment? This month near Detroit, I will be introducing a panel of industry experts focused on these questions. Leaders from companies including Toyota, Hitachi Estemo, and Comcast Business will be featured in a business breakfast setting. And the news from the event will be shared on this podcast. You can even attend. Just go to globalautomobility.com. Hitachi Estemo is helping OEMs drive towards sustainability with their electrification technologies. Learn more at AM. HitachiEstemo.com. This week, Ford announced the test of a small fleet of prototype hydrogen fuel cell versions of its electric e-transit model. The goal is to determine if they are a workable zero-emission option for hauling heavy goods long distances. The effort is a three-year project that includes Ford, BP, and the British online supermarket and technology group, Ocado. The focus on hydrogen and infrastructure is supported by Ford's view that the fuel cell technology has a place in powering large, heavy commercial vehicles, making them emission-free while still satisfying their relatively high energy consumption needs. According to a report in Reuters, there's a growing interest in using hydrogen fuel cells to power fleets of trucks and vans due to increasing government support, especially the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. And more on hydrogen. Also this week, 
Toyota and Hyundai said they would broaden each company's U.S. hydrogen fuel cell semi-truck projects. For several years, Toyota has worked with truck maker Pekar on fuel cell test vehicles. And now those efforts will be amped up in an effort to push fuel cell trucks toward production, with a goal of customer deliveries in 2024. Since 2017, the Toyota Packer project has involved testing trucks around ports in Los Angeles and Long Beach to gauge their ability to reduce local emissions and improve air quality. With the largest gig network in the country, Comcast Business has the technology solutions to future-proof your network. In Norway, the EV future has arrived. The country's EV sales as a percentage of all car sales reached 86% in 2021, making Norway the global leader, followed by Iceland, 72%, Sweden, 43%, Denmark, 35%. The U.S. rate almost last at just over 5%. The Biden administration is pushing for 50% of all new automobile sales to be EVs by 2030. In Ontario, EV charging just got very inexpensive for vehicle owners who are charging at home and willing to do so at night. The province has set an ultra-low electricity rate for EV owners, and the head of Electric Mobility Canada, a national advocacy group, is calling for other provinces to follow suit. This week, the provincial government rolled out new overnight electricity pricing, dropping the rate from 7.4 to 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. In exchange for the 67% savings, those who participate will pay a 59% higher rate during dinner time and in the evening. This plan is a third option offered alongside existing time of use and tiered plans, aimed at those who use more electricity at night, people like EV owners, shift workers, and those with electric heating. One of the biggest hurdles turning people off from buying electric cars is the time it takes to charge. Even a fast charging station today needs 20 to 60 minutes to get a driver back on the road with a full charge. And plugging it at home means many hours before your EV is ready to use. EV startup Fisker has a solution. Rather than recharging the same battery over and over, why not swap out a dead battery for a fresh one and be back on the road in minutes? The option will be offered to owners of the Fisker Ample SUV starting in 2024. Battery swapping promises to offer the same fill-up times as gasoline at a lower cost per mile. We will be right back. (laughs) We'll be right back. I'm ready. I'm ready. I can give it a go. Presenting. I did. That's why it makes no sense. Okay. The Powering Electric Vehicles campaign features industry leaders and experts. Running through the spring of 2023, the program will feature informational and educational content, as well as a May networking event. More at globalautomobility.com. More on the snake-like robot we told you about a few weeks back. NASA is testing the robot that one day may be used to look for life on Saturn's icy moon Enceladus. Weighing in at 220 pounds, the 13-foot-long machine is called EELS, or Exobiology Extent Life Surveyor. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, it will be self-propelled and autonomous due to the data lag between Earth and its intended destination. Engineers working on the project are trying to get the surveyor to independently slither through a variety of planetary and lunar terrains, including undulating sand and ice, steep cliffs, gaping craters, underground lava tubes, and narrow space or thin glaciers. The goal of creating a robot that can handle just about any terrain has taken a lot of time and work. Since 2019, engineers have tested and tweaked the design in a variety of environments, including NASA's simulated Martian landscape, called the Mars Yard, and the snowy mountains of Southern California, all in an attempt to ready eels to navigate through the icy crust of Enceladus and into the saltwater oceans that lay below. Finally, a robot deployment plan for closer to home. Real close, in fact. 
Researchers have developed a soft robot that can be inserted through a tiny hole in the skull, deploying six sensor-filled legs on the surface of the brain. The idea is to offer patients a less invasive way of placing electrodes on the brain's surface. Currently, the process of human brain exploration involves surgeons cutting a hole in the skull the size of the fully extended device. If the new robot proves to be safe and effective for use on humans, the upside could be monitoring and even treating patients who experience epileptic seizures or other neurological disorders. The soft robot is currently 0.8 inches long, and its legs are made from flexible silicone polymer. They resemble curved flower petals spiraling around the central body. Extending by filling with liquid, the legs reach out with electrodes designed to monitor brain activity. Read these stories and more at globalautomobility.com and subscribe to Smart Mobility today on your favorite podcast platform. Sign up to receive our weekly newsletter and follow us on social media at Smart Mobility Today. Produced by Detroit Media Productions, this is Smart Mobility Today.